In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the backend infrastructure on AWS that allows you to host a static website. You're going to be creating this with the AWS CDK in TypeScript. Building websites has gone full circle in the last 20 years. It used to be that every website was just some static HTML with maybe a bit of JavaScript on the front end to make it interactive. And then we moved to single page applications where the HTML being sent to your browser was just completely empty with one tag that was used as a hook to mount your client size front end application using things like AngularJS and later React. But now in the 2020s, we do seem to be shifting back to static pages again. Static HTML that's pre-rendered on the server has a bunch of advantages over single page applications. If you have a public facing website and you care about SEO, then having static HTML is a massive advantage, but also for performance. If you can pre-render your HTML pages and put them in a content delivery network, then clients can connect to that CDN and they can just pull the HTML and show it on the screen incredibly quickly without having to wait for any JavaScripts to run on the front end. In AWS, the CDN that's best suited for this is called CloudFront. CloudFront is a distributed content delivery network. So it's a cache basically that can be exposed to the web. And it can also be linked to a custom domain and it can serve static files with incredibly low latency to run it to your users. CloudFront is one of the best CDNs around the world. So you can see this in this lovely diagram from AWS that they have CloudFront caches deployed in lots of geographical locations around the world. And the content is replicated or can be replicated to these. These are called CloudFront edges. When the user requests the data, it goes to the closest edge location to them. So it's incredibly cost effective and extremely reliable and it's an extremely fast way of serving HTML to your clients. To get CloudFront to serve static files like HTML, you need to create what CloudFront calls an origin. So this is the place that CloudFront goes to get your static content. So that could be a backend web server, if you're just using CloudFront for caching the output of a web server, which you can do, um, or it could be an S3 bucket. S3 is AWS's cloud storage solution. So that lets you upload files and then make those files available to other AWS services and make them available directly to the web. So this pairing of a CloudFront cache and an S3 bucket is what we're gonna be building in today's tutorial using the AWS CDK. I'm also gonna show you how to link a custom domain to that static website, because that's something you can do in the CDK as well. All you need to do is to have purchased a domain and linked it inside Route 53. We're gonna be using constructs, so check out my other video up here on what the AWS constructs are, and we're gonna be coding it all in TypeScript. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is create a new AWS CDK application with CDK init app, and then dash dash language TypeScript. Okay, so we've got a new uh, TypeScript file here called My Static Site. I've added in a bunch of imports that we're gonna use in a minute, but essentially all we've got here is a new AWS CDK application that I've deleted most of the code out of, a bunch of NPM packages and a bunch of imports. So the first thing we need to do to create a um, CloudFormation stack for this is give it a props object. So if I create an interface in here called um, static site props, that's gonna extend cdk.stackprops. And there's two variables that we're gonna configure our stack with. Remember the beauty of AWS CDK is that it hides away a lot of the finer details and a lot of the finer configuration and it allows you to just have a couple of very, very high level configuration settings that you pull into it. So in our case, there's gonna be two things that we configure. There's gonna be a domain name for our static website and there's gonna be a static site subdomain. So these you will need to do yourself. If you've got a domain name, then you'll need to go and buy that domain name, put it into AWS Route 53, create a hosted zone for it. And then when you create an instance of this, you'll pass in your domain name into here. And subdomain is like, you know, it could be app.example.com. So that's gonna be passed in here as well. Um, the reason we pass these in separately is because your AWS Route 53 origin, or your sorry, your hosted zone, will be called domain name, and then site subdomain is what we're going to be using for our actual website. Okay, so that's a props object. So next thing we're going to do is actually create a class for the stack. That's going to extend cdk.stack, and that's going to take in a constructor that takes in a scope and an ID and that props object we just had there. We'll call super with these three props in it as well. And then we're gonna pull out domain name and static site subdomain from our props object. And we're gonna create the actual domain name by uh, concatenating those two together. So this site domain here is what our static site is gonna be set up with. Um, and this domain name is gonna help us find the hosted zone. So let's go ahead and create the S3 bucket that backs this. 
Um, I'm going to add a bunch of properties in here. So new S3 bucket, we'll give it a name. This isn't actually the name of the bucket. This is an identifier inside CloudFormation to identify this specific resource here. So to give the bucket a name, you do that with a prop inside here. So I'll just add a few props in here. We're going to put bucket name, and there's a few extra props I'm going to set up. Index document, error document, read access I'm going to set to false, and then the removal policy I'm going to set to destroy, and also delete objects true. So what, let's explain what a few of these are doing. When you set up an S3 bucket to be a hosted website, you usually give it a place where it can find the index HTML, and then if there's any uh, 404 errors or anything, then it can automatically serve an error page as well. These aren't required, but it's good practice to have these in here. Um, we're not actually gonna expose this S3 bucket to the public. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an origin access control policy from CloudFront. So essentially CloudFront will be able to access this S3 bucket. You won't be able to just navigate to it on the internet. And that's really important because it's CloudFront that we're gonna actually want our users to be um, visiting basically, right? The removal policy means if we delete our CloudFormation stack, we're also going to delete this S3 bucket. And you have to set that explicitly because AWS lends you to not wanting to delete loads of data that you've put in AWS, just in case you accidentally delete a stack. Cool, so the next thing we're gonna to need to do is if you go and create a domain name and put that into root 53 and create a hosted zone, we need to reference that hosted zone in our CloudFormation stack in the AWS CDK. So you can do that by creating a variable, and then calling root53.hostedzone.fromlookup, and then we're gonna pass in the domain name. So that's the domain name of your website. What that will do is it will go into root53 and it will find the hosted zone with this name. So you will need to set that up manually. It will pull that in and it will putting it into a variable, which we can use later on in our CDK stack. Um, the next thing we need to do is do the permissions part so that CloudFormation can, sorry, CloudFront can access this S3 bucket. So to do that, we'll create a origin access identity. That's gonna be a new instance of CloudFront.origin access identity. And then we're gonna set that to give it re permissions on our site bucket. So this access identity will be used in the second when we create the CloudFront instance, but essentially we're creating this access identity and we're saying that it has access to be able to read this bucket because the bucket itself is not actually public. Cool. Next thing we're going to need to do is going to need to create an SSL certificate. And we can do this inside the CDK. So that SSL certificate will be in um, the US East 1 region because all cloud fund certificates need to be in that region. It's going to be a DNS validated certificate, which means that because we're creating this headlessly basically through code, it means that when we create this certificate, it will go into Route 53 for us and it will create the DNS validation records, which are very important. So you won't have to click links and emails or anything like that. So we'll create a new instance of that DNS validator certificate and we're passing a couple of props into this. We'll give it the domain name which is our site domain name and we're going to pass in the hosted zone so that it can do the DNS validation for us. Now let's create a CloudFront distribution. We're going to create a CloudFront web distribution, give it a name and uh, some of the props in here are going to be, there's going to be an alias configuration which is, um, this is where CloudFront links to our custom domain basically, right? So this object is gonna have the certificate reference, which is gonna be that, and it's gonna have the domain names and it's gonna have an SSL method on there. Security policy will be cloudfront.securityprotocol.tls v2.2119. We're also gonna create some origin config in here. So the origin config is going to be a, you need this in CloudFront, you need an origin, and that tells it where to get um, the files from under particular roots. So our origin is gonna be an S3 bucket source, which we add like this. And then for the S3 bucket source, we're gonna pass in a reference to our site bucket up the top here. So if I pass this in here, um, and then the access identity as well, and then some behaviors, so the behaviors are gonna basically say, there's gonna be a default behavior, which means any route on our CloudFront um, distribution will go through to this S3 origin policy. So CloudFront is essentially mirroring the structure of the S3 bucket. If you go to any route on CloudFront, it will just go straight through, through to this origin, and it'll find that route in the S3 bucket. Cool, okay, so that's gonna be enough to deploy it as it is, but we still need to add the, um, custom domain name to this. So we've added a certificate for our custom domain name. What we can do next is we can add in an actual root 53A record that's the site alias record so that this will create the record in root 53 that points to this cloud formation, cloud font stack. So we give it a name and we're gonna give it the target which is gonna be from alias targets, cloud font targets, distribution. 
So that's going to create an alias distribution towards our cloud front distribution here, an alias record. Uh, we need to pass in the hosted zone. And we're also going to create a buckets deployment. So this is going to be a... Uh, we also need to just quickly create a bucket deployment for S3. So we'll give that a deployment source, which is going to be site contents and destination bucket, we're going to be that. There we go. So this doesn't exist, but essentially what this is going to do is it's going to look for a directory on our machine or wherever this is running, and it's going to upload the contents of site contents to this bucket when we do a CDK deploy. So you probably want to have an index.html in that site contents folder and an error.html in there as well. And what this will do is it means that when we deploy our CloudFormation stack, it will also upload the contents of our static website. So that's basically it. That's all we need to be able to do is create the stack. I'm going to create an output variable here for the URL of the site. That's going to point to site domain, basically. That's just so you can remember um, where you actually deployed this thing to. You don't necessarily need that. Cool. So that's all we need for our um, CloudFormation stack for the static website. This has got everything we need. The next thing you can do is in the CDK, you actually, this isn't the entry point to the CDK application. This is a reusable CloudFormation stack inside the CDK. The entry point will look like this. It will be an app.tsx.ts where we're creating a new instance of cdk.app. And so in this entry file, that's where we're going to create a new instance of my static site stack. There we go. This is where we set up our domain name and our subdomain name. So our domain name can just be example.com and our subdomain name will be www. So this is going to create our static site stack with www.example.com and then this will be a domain that we've purchased that we've set up in Route 53 and that we've created an origin for. So that's basically it. This is everything we need. We can now run CDK deploy from the command line. We can uh, set these variables to our actual variables and it will create us a static website in AWS. If you want to know more about how to actually deploy this, because I'm not going to do that now, I've got a video up on my channel um, that shows you how to deploy a CDK application um, and how you can view it and debug it and stuff like that once it's on AWS. So that's it. I'll pop the code for all of this in the description to the video. It'll be on GitHub if you want to try this out for yourself. Watch my other videos on here about how to deploy all of this CD code to your AWS account and start running your static website. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. My name is James Charlesworth and I'll see you in the next one.